Welcome back to our series on selecting the proper measuring equipment for your shop. You know, last time we had Bob on, we talked about having good data to start with. Today we want to talk about the equipment and the hardware itself and why having good tolerance within specification equipment is important. What are some of the things that can go wrong if I've got equipment that's out of specification? Well, obviously, you know, the first thing is the measurement's not going to be correct. But how did it get that way? Right? Wear and tear, um, damage to the equipment, things along those lines. And so, you know, technicians from time to time, we're not always uh, most respectful of some of our equipment potentially, so we could, uh, over, the, over the course of time, maybe have some damage to the equipment, uh, put some things back into a, a pl place they don't belong, maybe bend something or twist something. Is that all possible? That's correct, yeah. Um, you know, when you're working with, say, a laser system, maybe you don't get a good reflection back off the target okay. because it's been scratched or burned by some, you know, MIG splatter, things like that. And would there be any way for me as a technician to know that that equipment's out of specification? So there's no other company than Select that will provide you with an actual calibration tool to check your measuring system. Okay, so you have a tool that's designed to actually help make sure that the, the equipment itself is within specification? Yes, that's right. So Select's the only company that actually provides checking tool to check the tolerance of your actual measuring system. Okay, and how does this work? So what we do is we start up the software and we enter a diagnostic page and we take this measuring tool and we simply measure from this point to this point and it gives us the actual figure here of okay. 340 millimeters okay. plus or minus 0.2. So that's, that's our allowance. Two, two tenths of one millimeter, very small. Right. Okay. And then what's, what, what else do we need to know about so this? So the other side is just a different measurement of uh, 360 millimeters. Okay, so we check both of those? You can. Um, if you check one side and you, you get a good number, you know the other side's going to be correct as well. And how frequently should I do that? Uh, we don't promote it, um, okay. that it should be done every time. You're more than welcome. It only takes a couple seconds sure. to check it. But um, it's just, it it's, uh, gains confidence that you know, the equipment is within spec. Okay. Now, SLED also has a number of functionality from a, from a tolerance standpoint, a specification, built into the equipment itself. Is that correct with, you know, the, the, the arms themselves and the extensions? What's, what's that all about? Right. So, <clears throat> in order for the nausea system to leave the factory, it has to be 0.7 millimeters or under. So, less than one millimeter okay. before it can actually be shipped. So there's a lot that goes into that. Um, every part for the nausea is serial numbered. Okay. So the rail, the head, all the extension arms are all serial numbered for the reason that each one has its own driver file. What does that mean? So say a technician loses this arm. Okay. Or runs it over, breaks it. Some companies will just send him a new piece. Now, this new piece could be slightly different than the piece that came with the, with the system. Okay. So say it's a half a millimeter difference. When they cut the carbon fiber, just the blade was a little bit thicker, sure. and now it's a half a millimeter difference. At Select, we don't accept that. So if you buy this new extension arm, you'll get a new driver file to install on your computer. Okay. So for this 200 millimeter extension, We'll take out the old driver file. Okay. Because that one, technician ran over. New one shows up with new software, and that driver file will now be placed in the program so that it knows exactly which arm it's using. Okay. And you said that's for the entire, uh, there's drivers for all the different pieces of equipment, they're all tied together? Yeah, so <clears throat> the actual measuring rail. Yep. Um, it's extruded aluminum, it's pretty rigid, but when you put the weight of the measuring head on it and you slide it up and down the rail, there's a certain amount of flex okay. within that rail. So when we calibrate the machines, that's all taken into consideration. So we run the head back and forth over that rail and note exactly the movement of the rail. So the rail has its own driver file. Okay. We, the head is, knows where it is on the rail. So when it's at that certain point, it knows how much flexion it has to make up for in its height measurement. Okay, well that's, that's pretty, so last time we talked about the data and how um, you know, the, the factory build and the technician that's measuring the data to build, to build the database and the equipment itself 
just kind of compounds on top of each other to create a, a, a large tolerance. So would it be safe to say the same thing about equipment that doesn't do this where, again, this arm might be a little bit li longer, shorter potentially, this might be a little bit longer, shorter, so there might be a bend here and there. So if I don't take all that into consideration, again, I'm starting with bad data coming in, it just compounds itself once again. Yes, exactly. So, uh, you know, if say this arm was made out of aluminum, uh, it could have a bend in it, we don't know it. Okay. So we build this out of carbon fiber. So carbon fiber, once it moves, it cracks. Sure. So we know at that point we've got a damaged arm. Okay. And again, what, so we've got an arm with, with that whole database put together um, that we know that this arm with that head, with this extension, everything's where it needs to be. It all says, okay, we're all set to go, guys. We know where we are, and we're going to have some accurate, accurate measurements. Correct. Okay, very good. Uh, the other thing that, you know, that Select does is uh, inside this head, obviously, it, it moves. Yep. And we all know a circle's 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's 360 little lines that make up that circle. The sensor that we rotate on here, it's not broken into 360. Okay. It's broken into 1,440 okay. different segments. So it's very, very accurate. Okay. Um, when we come up here to the front, we've got another sensor here. So it allows us to measure at any angle from here to here, nearly 360 degree circle. Okay. Most measuring systems don't allow that. Most measuring systems, you're measuring at a 90 degree. Okay. And that and, way you can get around things and your measurements won't be off. Right, so we can plug in the 200 millimeter extension. We can measure on any angle here. It allows us to get around suspension points, um, anything that might be in the way, a plastic shield, something like that. Okay. The other yeah. nice thing is when you plug in this extension, the technician never has to go back to the computer and tell the system that it changed the arm. Okay. The arms are encoded. So once we plug this in, we'll unscrew this one. The computer knows we unplugged this. Okay. So if you looked at the screen, you'd see that there'd be no extension on the arm. Then once we plug in this 200 millimeter extension, it tells the computer that you've done that. Well, I think that that's important to know because I know as a technician, you often get distracted, right? So by the time I change my, my arm on there and walk back to the equipment, five different things could have happened in that, in that period of time uh, or, or even more, right? So I think that that's, that's a great idea there. So again, the equipment knows, hey, we now have the longer extension on there. I need to account for that in my measurements. I think right. that that's fantastic. Okay. And like I said, each one has its own driver file, so it knows the exact length of it, um, or if it's if it's a different shape extension. Uh, that's key because when you know when you build something like this, um, it could be slightly different than the one that came off the production line before it. So by building a driver file for each extension we've eliminated any tolerances. Okay. And what's the process with that driver file to get that information into my system? Well, we supply it as part of the software. Okay. So as a technician, you don't have to do anything. When okay. we set up your Naja database in your computer and install the software, it is installed. And what about a replacement? If I order a replacement part? So if you ordered a replacement, it would come with new driver file. Okay. Uh, we could remotely install that as well okay. from, from our office, so you wouldn't even have to have your technician do it. Okay, so again, something that's simpler for the technician, they don't have to go and, and do a bunch of adjustments and add new software, you can take care of that for them as well. Right, we let the technician fix the car and we'll take care of the software. Okay, well that's great. All right, so Bob, now we've talked about having good data and we talked the importance of having good equipment because whether this, the data that's off or the equipment that's off, bad data is bad data. Um, and it's impossible for us to repair the vehicle properly. Uh, the next piece that we've got, and we're talking about our next series, is going to be the technician and their, their role in it. So all those tied together is really going to give us the most accurate repairs. So in our next episode, we're going to talk about technician training and making sure that they understand their role in, in three-dimensional measuring.